Al Ula, located in the North Medina province of Saudi Arabia, is an ancient city that due to its strategic position has been a crucial hub for trade and helped sustain numerous civilizations over the time. To visit Al Ula in the present days means taking a trip back in time, surrounded by ancient wonders and that are truly awe-inspiring. In this interview, we will talk to the Royal Commission of Al Ula, Chief Tourism Officer, Philip Jones, he's going to tell us about the Royal Commission's determination to respectfully preserve the city's treasures while developing the modern infrastructure that will help to attract visitors. My name is Melika Fahou, and this is a moment with Philip Jones, the Royal Commission for Al Ula's Chief Tourism Officer. We are now in the old town of Al Ula, which dates back to the 12th century. And really, it's like traveling back in time, revitalizing the history and traditions of Saudi Arabia forever. Indeed. In fact, we just received an award as best tourism village from the oh, UNWTO. Wow. So we're very proud of it. And, and we've spent the last few years sort of refurbishing many of these buildings. There are over 800 in the old town. And many of them are now opening up as shops, boutiques, and restaurants. That's amazing. And if people would like to buy something or, you know, indulge more in the Arabic culture, uh, does the souk here offer something for locals or also for people from outside who want to buy something and discover? A absolutely. We have a locally made product. We have yeah. arts and crafts. If you want a beautiful abaya, you can certainly buy one. You don't have to wear an abaya when you yeah. come to a little or Saudi Arabia. So there is no dress code in no Saudi dress Arabia. Code. Just respect yeah. the local traditions and yeah. dress yeah, appropriately. But at yeah. the end of the day, we want you to be comfortable. Yeah and feel welcome. That's amazing. And uh, can you tell me a bit more about the people who live here, about the Al Ulans? Alula residents are some of the most gracious and hospitable people yeah. you'll ever meet. They're very proud of the history and heritage and they're excited that yeah. we're developing this as a tourism destination. A lot of the young men and women who live in Alula are now part of our industry and they're engaging with visitors and the visitors are charmed by their warmth and hospitality. So definitely a great place to visit. It's such a sunny day today, Philip. It's uh, every day in Alula is a sunny day. It's a beautiful place. Exactly, it is. So tell me a bit, who do you want to attract to visit this little oasis in the desert? Well, it's people who are interested in adventure, people who are interested in arts and culture, yeah. who are interested in history and heritage, who want to really learn something when they visit a destination. It's also folks who are affluent and who travel frequently, who are looking for something new and different that they can't find anywhere else in the world. But you know, Philip, what I noticed when I arrived in Al Ula, that there was not a flood of tourists. Is this something that the Royal Commission of Al Ula has done purposefully, like curbing the numbers of people? By design, we don't want to be a mass tourism destination. Our goal is to get to maybe a million visitors by the end of the decade. Yeah. So that when you come here and you are immersed in this amazing destination, you're doing it in a very bespoke way. You're yeah. doing it so you're not surrounded by thousands of other people because it's a mystical destination and it's a place where you can recharge and reset and you don't want to do that in large crowds. And you want to preserve the charm this destination has to offer. Thank you, Philip, for taking me here. It's such a beautiful, magnificent place. Can you tell me more about this hotel? Well, this is Dara Tentora, one of our latest hotels. It's, it's a hotel that's focused on ecotourism, very sustainable, yeah. using the practices from the last 800 years where you refurbish these mud brick buildings yeah. and you're cool in the summer and warm in the winter, but using very limited natural resources. So it's a, it's a one, one new addition to the visitor experience in the destination. And I think it's a beautiful balance between preserving the Saudi culture, but still getting the five-star luxury experience. Indeed. I think I think like Al Ula hosts a lot of five-star hotels. Uh, if you can remind me of their names. Sure, we have uh, Banyan Tree and we have Habitats, or two existing five-star okay. hotels. And we've announced a Six Senses and also a Naman Hotel that's in the process of being developed and built. One of the beauties of coming to Alula is people like to come here and disengage and recharge and reset because it's such a, a warm and mystical setting. And it's a very sheltered community, very. I think. It's a very uh, private climate here yeah. in Al Ula. Yeah. It's a bit off the beaten track. Yeah. And uh, people who come here really love it because they feel a sense of bespoke tourism where they don't feel like they're part of a crowd of a thousand. And just look at this beautiful view that's surrounding us. Not a bad us, setting. You know? in, every, in every direction you look in Al Ula, it's, it's hard to find a bad view. It really is. 
we're now in the Tig in Higra, which is the first UNESCO World Heritage Site of Saudi Arabia. Philip, can you tell me a bit more about this place? It's an amazing place. It's a very special destination, and very few people in the world know about it. It has 7,000 years of continuous historical civilization, with many of them leaving their mark, including the Nabataeans who uh, developed Hegra, uh, which you can see behind us, Castle Al Farid, we call it the Lonely Castle. It's You've one both. of the many 111 monuments we have here in Hegra alone that you know, really are a unique way to sort of introduce an audience of visitors from around the globe to the amazing diversity of what you have in Saudi Arabia. And looking just at our surrounding is just magnificent. Do you sometimes just pinch yourself and think to yourself, wow, this is where I'm really working at? You know, when I was first approached about coming to Alula, I thought Alula was in Hawaii. And I asked, which island is Alula? And they said, no, it's in Saudi Arabia. And I said, you know, no, thank you. I'm not interested in going to Saudi Arabia. They said, no, no, you come, come see this place. So they flew me over and I, I just took a look around at the diversity, the beauty, the mysticism of the place, and I fell in love with it. And then to be involved in an opportunity to help create a tourism ecosystem, literally from the ground up over the last five years, and introduce this to a global audience is something that I've been really excited and proud to be able to be part of. And tell me a bit, Philip, so how has the local population actually reacted to the influx of tourists coming to Alula? You know, what's interesting is if you look at the, the workforce in Alula today, you'll see that almost 50% of the workers are women or small women-owned businesses. So before we opened, you know, the, the kingdom to tourism, many of these women didn't have really good career opportunities. And I'll give you a good example. I'm a, I'm a runner. As I told you, I like yes. to run in Hegra in the mornings on weekends. And I was out running one morning and this old gentleman, a farmer in a beat up old truck, stopped me and he handed me his phone. And it was his daughter. And his daughter was in Chicago going to school to get a degree in hospitality. And she said, my dad just wants to say thank you for this opportunity. And to me, that really sort of put in perspective exactly what we're doing here. And what I'm excited about is a lot of the workers who work in our industry now are young Saudi men and women who are embracing the change taking place in this country. And they're huge advocates and ambassadors for the transformation of, of Saudi Arabia. And it's authentic, it's real, and it's fun to watch. It's fun to be able to mentor these young Saudi men and women for jobs in the tourism industry in the future. Because when I leave, they're going to take it to the next level. And it's going, yeah. to be, it's going to be amazing because we have such a great product to work with. So as a chief tourism officer, so the work that you're doing, it's not only about the work, but about the impact that you're bringing to the community and the people, I guess. Absolutely. I mean, you know, our job is to create economic impact jobs, generate revenue, and create an industry for Alula as one of the leading projects in the kingdom. And one of the ways we do that is by, you know, encouraging local residents from Alula to work in hotels, to work in restaurants, to work in our museums and other visitor assets. We have many rowies, we call them, we're tour guides who come from the local community who have tremendous pride in the history and heritage of, the, of this area, particularly here in Hegra. And it's one of the most popular sort of visitor experiences we have to offer. But again, we're never going to be a mass tourism destination. We want, when you come to Lula, you experience it with a small number of people so that you don't lose the majesty and the beauty and the uniqueness of the visitor experience. When you say uniqueness about the visitor experience, what do you actually mean by that? What I, can people expect when they come here? I think what, what we mean by unique is there's nothing else like this in the world, right? But we want to really work to keep it authentic. So we're never going to be, you know, developing big high-rise hotels and flashy neon signs. You're never going to see that in Alula. It's never going to be Dubai, okay? It's going to be authentic and true to who it is as a destination and, and what it offers. And, you know, when we have visitors who are coming, they want to experience something they've never experienced before. And so our target audience are luxury visitors, high-end visitors who want to come and stay in a lovely hotel like Banyan Tree or Habitas or Dara Tentora and experience something they can't find anywhere else in the world. They're the folks who are sort of the urban pioneers or they're global explorers, and they want to really understand and be the first to visit a destination. So in year one, I've been here almost five years, we hosted 21,000 visitors. Last year, we hosted 250,000 visitors. So again, our goal is to get to a million visitors, but never much more than that, because what we don't want to do is take away from the beauty, the nature, the, the uniqueness of the ex experience in a way that you can't find anywhere else, right? So that's what makes Alula special. So you've been a total here five years in Alula in Saudi Arabia. And from these five years, I think like in year 2023, you became the chief tourism officer. Um, what made you decide to stay? What made you decide to take such a high role, such, an, such a difficult and impactful role? 
Well, you know, when I started, I was yeah. responsible for destination marketing and operations. So, you know, telling the story of, of Alula to a global audience. But then you look around at all the different projects we're doing. We're, you know, reintroducing wildlife into the natural areas. We're breeding Arabian leopards, which are almost extinct. So we have a, a, a breeding facility uh, for the Arabian leopard. We have a lot of work on culture we've put in place as we have currently Desert X taking place in Alula. We are building something called Wadi Alfan, which is Valley of the Arts with massive art installations. We're working on the different pillars of the destination. And so they needed someone to sort of put all of that together uh, under, that under one banner. <laughs> and so I, I, I accepted the opportunity and it's just been a, a fascinating journey. I mean, there's so much potential for this destination. There's so much diversity in, in the programs that we're doing. So when people come to you, you know, and they ask you, well, Philip, I've already been to the desert in many places around the world. Why should I fly all the way to Saudi Arabia to experience the desert? What's so different? Because you've mentioned that now a few times that, you know, Al Ola is not a place like anywhere you can find. But why? I think you know, there are deserts everywhere in the world and we have yeah. an amazing desert. But what, what most deserts don't have is 7,000 years of history and civilization. Each of them that left their mark, it's not just the Nabataeans, but it's also the Dagonites and the Lahians. It goes back, you know, ultimately we found historical artifacts dating back 200,000 years. And so what we're trying to do is make sure that, you know, we are preserving and protecting these heritage sites, telling the story in an authentic way, and making sure that everything we do is done sustainably because we need to make sure it's around for another 7,000 years. And, and so how that, do you do that? How do you preserve the treasures that Al Ula um, has already on the site uh, and still get tourists to visit the place? Well, we have to be very careful. And so we have what we call our cultural manifesto. And, and, and it, it is really our commitment to sustainability to ensure that everything we do will be done properly, sustainably, in an eco-friendly way. And so what we, what we are very careful of is when we're working to develop a site like Kegra, we have to preserve and protect it and make sure that everything we're doing is done properly. So we're not rushing in and building in new facilities with concrete and lights and, and modern sort of conveniences. We're, we're retrofitting what we have into the environment. If you look at our hotels, all of them blend into the environment. There's nothing that will stand out. Uh, we have a dark skies policy. Everything we're doing is is to make sure that when people come here, they get to see and experience something that is unlike anything else. And at the same time, engage with the local community. We have 37 restaurants open now. We have five hotels and many more on the way. But what we're doing is training locals for those jobs so that when a visitor engages with an employee in Alula, they're talking to someone from the local community or certainly from Saudi Arabia so that they can understand and appreciate the, the, the uniqueness and the beauty of this place. If someone was to come to you, Philip, and would say, hey, I have attended one of the global PR campaigns in Beijing, London or Paris or around the world, but I'm still not convinced, and you would have one sentence to describe al -Ula, how would you get that person to, to come and visit? The most authentic, unique and special place in the world that you've probably never experienced anything like it. Thank you so much for everything, Philip. Thank, Thank you. you for explaining this place, uh, the history, the projects, the future, the art scene, and many more things that can be explored here in Ola. Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity, and I encourage all of your viewers to come visit Alula. Go to experiencealula.com and learn more about this amazing place. And come back. Indeed.